Ang kutyo. Ang tunggabeh pakah mto pencemarakan di titik di saat naka. Hai menurut al bidika junte Nah, tapi nyanyi nama ibu toh katang kemudian di daun ibu pasak sayi, eh, ambil tol pdk cinta cekrom sibel karai, dan lu kray memang nong cong di jay apa itu, cuy lu kray. Yes, thank you, President. Cekrom sibel karai. Mr. Head of the President has asked me to mention. Uh, a couple of matters to you. Uh, first of all, um, the evidence before this tribunal has certain rules that have already been uh, uh, ruled upon, uh, and that includes um, that we don't look at the investigation. So if this matter comes up again, uh, uh, the Chamber asks you not to stray into the area of the investigation. Uh, secondly, it would be greatly appreciated because of time constraints if you could compress your answers. Uh, and um, uh, we all know that undoubtedly you have a great deal of information, but please listen listen to the prosecutor and keep your answers as brief as possible. Uh, and thirdly, earlier this afternoon, the prosecutor uh, asked you to write down the name of an interviewee, which you did. Uh, the President has now asked me to uh, ask you to state the name of that person uh, publicly because he does not have a pseudonym assigned by the court, uh, and therefore there, it is quite proper for that person's name to be mentioned in open court. President, thank you. Oui, je ne veux pas confisquer le, le, le micro, simplement une clarification, puisque tant ce matin que cet après-midi, lorsque vous avez été interrogé sur euh, certaines sources euh, mentionnées dans votre livre, il a été question d'un livre écrit par In Sophie. Et je voudrais savoir si euh, vous avez décrit ce, ce document comme étant un document dactylographié qui était écrit en français. Et je voudrais savoir si le titre suivant vous dit quelque chose. Euh, que s'en pan agrandi et réel. Une note biographique par Insofip. Est-ce que c'est le document auquel vous faisiez référence Peut-être pourriez-vous nous le confirmer d'ici demain, et si c'est le cas, je, je précise à l'intention des parties pour que ceci soit noté sur le, le primitif, sur les, les, le record que le document en question a été versé au débat et c'est une décision de la Chambre qui figure à la référence E236-4-2. Donc c'est un document qui devrait très prochainement recevoir un numéro en E3. Mr. Hedder, can you read the name, please? Uh, the name is Dao Som Ol. Dao Som Ol. 
And can you read the document number if there so is no, one? I, don't, I can't remember no, if, it, been if you have the E number on that document or D number. It's uh, got a D number, but not an E number. Yeah. And the D number is D210 stroke 10. Thank you. Can I collect that back just so that it's kept? Can I collect that back Can you put that back? I think it's too soon. Now, Mr. Hedda Udong. Some know. Look at the penic, you're so much. 1974. Is this the sequence of events that the Khmer Republic forces were in control of the town? The Khmer Rouge come in in what you described as an attack. You mentioned the evacuation. And on the day you went, the Khmer Republic were back in the town. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Now, Mr. Hedda can you help us on how so long the attack was on Udong by the Khmer Rouge? Days, hours? My recollection is that it was over a 24-36 hour period. And how long were the Khmer Rouge in control of Udong? Again, my, my recollection is, is, is a day or so, but I, I'm frankly not absolutely sure. In terms of executions, you mentioned the Buddhist nuns, but you used this phrase, other categories. Now, can you help on your observations or your interviews about other categories? Uh, again, my vague recollection is there was talk about executions of military personnel, civil servants, um, and then there was the specific mention of the nuns, and I was then taken or, or went to see the bodies of the nuns. Civil servants and soldiers of, of who? Uh, Khmer Republic Shalai. civil servants and Khmer Republic military Khmer personnel. Khmer personnel. Now, from your observations, from the interviews that you conducted, or from any other direct sources, without speculating, did you receive any other information about what had precipitated the evacuation? Humanitarian crisis, bombing, anything of that nature? I don't recall any explanation as, for, as to why the evacuation had been carried out. Out. Same question in respect of sources. But in the period from 1971 to 1975, did you obtain information about any other evacuations in any other area of the country apart from what you've mentioned about Udong. Udong is not the case. Um, yes, I did do some interviewing after the Partial occupation by Khmer Rouge forces of Kampong Cham provincial town, uh, during which, according to what I recall of the interview, I was told 
And some people were killed on the spot before the meeting of the U.S. and before the Khmer Republic Marine Forces, if I remember correctly, came up and reasserted military control over the whole of the provincial town. I think that was September 73. If I recall Oui, je voudrais former une objection parce que je trouve que nous sommes dans une situation un petit peu difficile. Le procureur, on le voit bien, pose des questions relative à des événements et la seule réponse que peut y apporter en toute bonne foi M. Eder, c'est de dire oui, effectivement, j'ai entendu parler de ces événements à travers des interviews. Mais nous sommes ici dans une enceinte judiciaire. Nous avons des milliers de documents qui ont été déposés et qui ont été déclarés recevables par votre chambre. Euh, S'il existe des entretiens, euh, eh bien, euh, à ce moment-là, et qu'ils font partie du corpus euh, de preuves euh, qui peut être examiné par votre chambre, eh bien, euh, ils seront examinés <coughs> ou pas mais euh, ils font partie du corpus de preuves. On nous dit que M. Eder vient déposer comme euh, témoin de la manière dont il a récolté des preuves pour le tribunal. Je veux bien que, effectivement, euh, la... la sa présence à Oudong puisse faire partie des investigations euh, et qu'elle soit utile à une description euh, des événements euh, sur, cet événement, sur, sur ce passage de l'histoire. En revanche, euh, quand on pose des questions générales aux témoins et que celui-ci ne peut y répondre qu'en disant bah « oui, j'ai eu des entretiens, oui, on m'a dit que, on m'a dit que, on m'a dit que euh, », nous sommes, je le répète, encore une fois clairement dans une sorte euh, d'interrogatoire euh, d'experts, de sachants, de personnes dont euh, le procureur considère qu'il est particulièrement euh, compétent pour venir euh, nous décrire sans nous en donner des détails puisque à plusieurs reprises M. Eder a fait référence à des notes qu'il devrait consulter et ces notes euh, euh, nous ne savons pas s'il les a avec lui ou si elles sont euh, à son domicile ou ailleurs. Cela me rappelle un petit peu euh, la déposition de, de M. Chandler à cette barre qui lui aussi faisait référence à des notes potentielles qu'il avait dans sa chambre d'hôtel et qu'il euh, pouvait euh, éventuellement consulter le soir pour revenir le matin en lui donnant des informations. Mais M. Euh, M. Chandler a préparé en qualité d'expert. M. Heder a refusé de comparaître en qualité d'expert. Il comparaît en qualité de témoin. Et je trouve que nous sommes en train de passer, encore une fois, des questions qui ne sont plus celles qui seraient posées à un témoin, mais qui sont des questions posées à un expert dont on estime que il est particulièrement compétent euh, et crédible pour euh, décrire des choses euh, qu'il a appris par oui dire uniquement et sans donner de référence. C'est la raison pour laquelle je m'oppose à la question qui vient d'être posée. Memorandum, email, 3rd of July, Mr. Roberts, all parties. Quote, the questions shall be directed primarily to evidence the witness gathered either during the interviews he conducted, 
ដែលសួរទៅលើប្រធានតំណែងសួរទៅលើប្រធានតំណែងនេះគ្នាជាងសួរទៅលើប្រធានតំណែងនេះគ្នាជាងសួរទៅលើប្រធានតំណែងនេ
indexes to these funds. Can I hand out copies of the indexes so that everyone knows where I'm going with my questioning, what the files contain, and the purpose is to assist Mr. Heather by having the materials ordered in front of me, so I don't have to ask for documents and getting it back and changing my files. I hope it will assist your understanding of these matters. Can I please have your attention? Mr. President, given that everyone now has the indexes, can I please now provide the Lever Arch files to Mr. Header? Mr. Header, three additional files. The file on the spine of each file has a number. Two, three, and four. Can I ask you please to turn to file two, tab seven? Document number D210-10. This is now, as far as you're concerned, the statement of the gentleman whose name you gave to the court. I'd like you please to turn to it. Easiest for you, page six of the statement. English ERN 0043-68-82. French 0046-30-18. So this is your interview with this gentleman. 
question at the top of the page. But the place you previously stayed belonged to the east zone. And I wonder if this can be displayed, please, this document. And the problem started since around 73. And later on, you understood that there might be problems within the leadership of the East Zone. Answer from the interviewee. In general, starting from 1973 onward, I started to be suspicious about them because I saw their activities in 73 and 74. They purged the internal carters and regular carters accusing them of being corrupted and wild. At that time, there were just two main accusations, one of which was the immoral act of womanizing, and the second one was the internal enemy borrowing from within. Can you confirm that that is what you were told in this interview? Um. Yes. And just to remind us, this interview held, this interviewee held what position in what sector or zone? Uh, I don't know. He was a. He moved around various position within the East Zone um, and was in several sectors that uh, ended up as being Secretary of Sitor Kandal District uh, of Sector 22. Right, thank you. I want to move on to a topic now of the Vietnamese and the Unfortunately, unfortunately, the first question I have is on this same witness Can you turn back on page to page 5 in this ERN 0046 Question, just year 1973. Answer. Yes, since year 73. Because at that time, I saw the situation was changed. The first main problem was when they expelled the Vietnamese. They expelled the Vietnamese forces from the Cambodia-Vietnam borders and from our territory in 73. That was around Ju July or August. I do not recall which month exactly. That was the first event. And the second event began in 1973. It was the purge and arrest of the carters from the North Zone who had been trained in the North Vietnam in Hanoi. They started to arrest them step by step. Can you confirm that that was what was said to you in this interview? Uh, yes, except for the fact that I think there is a slight mistake in the translation um, where the translation reads North Zone as if it refers to the North Zone of the, uh, in the Khmer Rouge administrative system. It's actually referred to the northern half of Vietnam. Otherwise, fine. Next, please. File. We're going on to another statement now. File 2, tab 1. Question. E number. E3. E3. First page. So this is at your index one, file two. So it's the same file you have, but no, at the front, Mr. Hedden. You've got numbers going down the tabs. So tab one, behind tab one. 
มาซาโตมะซูชิตะอินเดียสเตดิ้งอินเดียสเตดิ้งอินเดียสเตดิ้งอินเดียสเตดิ้งอินเดียสเตดิ้งอินเดียสเตดิ้งอินเดียสเต
English ERN ប្រំបីអ៊ីនទីយូនម្បឺអេតីបាត់សម្ភាសលេខ at the time of the Lon Nol's coup, no, Vietnamese no, troops came into no, and established no, state no, power no, under their control no, in Tham no, 13. No, no, the Khmers, no, who had gone no, to Hanoi no, in 1954, no, were put in, no, in no, charge no, but under no, the no, Vietnamese no, control. No, I can only remember no, the name no, of one no, of them, no, Yem. No, 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 was a Khmer secretary, and there were hundreds of such Khmers who came to Tambon 13 from Hanoi. The Vietnamese intentions was to control Cambodia the same way they control Laos. From the villages up, Khmers from Hanoi were at the Kum, Kum district and Tambon level. I don't know whether there were also such people at the region level. These Khmers were the subject of purges starting in the end of 1971. Is that correct if you were told this by this witness? Yes. Next ចំឡាយបាទ but by early 1971 ยิงเฮาจนจิตขมายถึงอัตราปีฮานุยอันซอมอลเลตเดอะเวย there was only one or two in each place separated from each other. So when we began pulling them out, the others did not realize what was happening, and so we were able to get rid of almost all of them. Very few realized what was happening in time and escaped to Vietnam. I don't know where this overall plan came from, but in each level of the Khmer organization, there were meetings to discuss how to carry it out. Each level received instructions the level of can you confirm, please, the content on this page? เอ่อ
ហើយគ្រាន់ជាតិថានឹងជាការពិតនោះទេសុពើសុពើស្គាស់ Now, on the description of the person, we've obviously got man from Tambom 13, Takao in the West, presumably part of her Can you remember I have a vague recollection of the guy's appearance, within the same body, so the same document, E3-1714. Can I now take you please to page 54? Page 54 for you, English Interview number 29. Took place at the Navy Camp 62 in Chantabore. March the 12th, 1980, the Sol, also known as Lorne, member of the Kampong Song City Standing Committee. Can you help us on what the Kampong Song City Standing Committee is a reference to? Can you help us on what the Kampong Song City Uh, yes, um, Kampong Saum was one of only two places in the CPK structure where they had a municipal committee, the other being Phnom Penh. So this was the, the party, the CPK leading committee for Kampong Saum City, of which Loin was one of the members. Your page 57. If we had captured Phnom Penh in 1974, it would also have been an evacuation. This had been a long-standing plan. Slogan was dry up Rung the đó. people from Chun, the enemy. Is this an accurate recording Ta of what you were told? Tra um yes. Chum lai, bad. In the course of all the direct Nâng interviews you have had with personnel relating to the democratic Campuchia period, has any other witness or any other document that you can recall mentioned the phrase dry up the people from the enemy? Uh, yes. Many, many, many. Many, many. Mean I guess I
Sao thích mà toàn lời tốt Là thông chí lục Mình bị bây giờ cục bế Mình bị cục bế xong ổ quân lục thiên Cả xong ổi bấm lư sạc đi nhá bàn xu Sự thật ta miên xả xây nạp xây tiết ta xả xây Trên đây chữ bác rư cò Xả xây chìa xả xây khơi Tốt phân đế để bàn bạp mò lục xả xây I agree. As any other, let's break it down. First, has any other individual that you have interviewed directly used the phrase dry up the people from the enemy? Uh, yes. Can you give us some indication, the old individual, a few individuals, just paint the picture? I mean, here I have to generalize. Um, this particular phrase has been mentioned to me by many people over many years. Um, if I had to guess how many we're talking dozens, um, and certainly going right back indeed to the pre-April 1975 period when I was in Phnom Penh, I've already heard this phrase. And I'll add, since you already asked the question, that it also frequently appeared in public broadcasts. Um, in, in the pre-April 75 period, the various radio stations that were directly or indirectly under the control of the Khmer Rouge used this phrase in their broadcast. And if one were to comb through the FIBIS, the FBIS, for the pre-April 75 period, I'm sure you would find numerous references to it. Thank you. The next page of this individual that you interviewed is page 58 for you. English RN 0070 after the failure of the early 1974 offensive, there were studies in the end of 1974. There were generalized study sessions. The purpose was the preparation for the attack in 1979. Is this an accurate recording? Of what we were told. Yes. I'd like you next within your file to go to tab two. Page two. This is your interview with Ian Sari, 17th of December 1996, E number, E3 89. Can you please turn to page 5 of this document, English ERN, 0041-7603, French, 0033-26. I say again, French, 0033-26-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5
I raised this matter with Paul Bolt in 1974, asking what preparations had been made for when we won Phnom Penh. We discussed the population at that time. You, on that, pardon me, where did you meet him? I met him near Phnom Penh. I had returned from Beijing. I came back in 73 and met the prince in Hanoi. I went to Beijing and came back in 74. You, when you led the economic delegation to Vietnam and went to Beijing, yes, I returned. I returned, and then we discussed what we should do when we won, and what preparations should be made. This was the view of His Excellency Zhou Enlai. He had asked me what plans we had after we won. I was in a difficult spot. I did not dare respond at all at the time. I said that I did not yet have any clear knowledge and he would have to wait until I could ask inside Cambodia. When I did ask inside the country, I did not dare ask about army matters. But I did ask what solution there would be to the problem of the people, what solution there would be to the problem of the three million people in Phnom Penh. Pol Pot replied to me that they already had all the experience they needed and that I should not concern myself with this and should instead concern myself with my duties abroad. I then said that I had been specifically asked by the Chinese leadership about this problem. He said that it was a very easy matter to resolve and that our Chinese comrades had nothing to worry about because we Khmer had clear-cut notions in this regard. Having been able to solve the problem in Stung Tren, and Krache provinces. So the solution to the problem was to evacuate. That was the only way to solve the problem. I responded by asking whether this meant a total evacuation or what. And he said to wait and see what the concrete situation would be at the time. Nevertheless, the term Evacuation was already being used in 1974. Is this an accurate recording of what you were told? Uh, yes. Now, just pausing here about the interview with the um, Can you just give us a flavour of how this interview was set up, what sort of um, efforts you needed to go to to uh, organise the interview, a little bit of background, please. And this happened after Yung Suri was officially presented as having led a breakaway of Khmer Rouge troops uh, to join the government. Um, and I'd had some contact with Suri by telephone at various points in time, even before that. Um, and then in December, two, December 96, I, went, I attended an academic conference in Australia. And while I was in Australia, I decided I would try and see Suri on my way back to Europe. So I called him in Australia and said, could I interview? And he said, 
telephone contact with him again, and he explained that the Thai authorities weren't going to allow me to cross into Pailin, so therefore he would have to come to see me, and would I please wait for him in a certain hotel? Um, and I proceeded to wait for him in that hotel until he appeared. Then we had a, a, a formal interview uh, during which E. Chien, his aide-de-camp, de facto aide-de-camp, was mostly present, after which we had a meal, and then he returned to Pailin. Thank you. We can see from the front of the document, E3-89, transcript from the audio tape. So, uh, handheld dictaphone, old-fashioned tape recorder, can you help? I was a little tape cassette machine uh, standard kind of journalist used in, in, in those days. I think there were three cassettes. Now, can you just help us on, I'm back on page 5 for you, which is the part I've quoted. It's the bit to try and give some timings to what Ying Sri, Ying Sri, you asked him. Well, let me break it down. He said I went to Beijing and came back in 74. You asked when you led the economic delegation to Vietnam and went to Beijing, and he said yes. Now, can you help us on uh, what month we are in 1974 for when Ying Sri comes back from an economic delegation to Vietnam and went to Beijing? Now, this is just I'm guessing here, frankly. I think it's late 74, but I would have to check right, Thank you. I'm moving now to a separate topic. It, it, it is the evacuation itself. Um, Mr. President, can I perhaps ask just to, to ask one, one part of one book, and then I'm conscious of time. But I'd just like to at least get into the second subject with one question. Mr. Hedder, file two aside for a minute. Can you please pick up file four, which is on your seat? It's the bottom file on your seat. File 4, Tab 1. Document E190.1.3.9. Title. Reassessing the role of senior leaders and local officials in democratic Cambodia crimes, Cambodian accountability in comparative perspective. Can I please take you to page six? The, the heading to this part was Rethinking the Dynamics of and Responsibility for DK-era Crimes. Quote. The problem is posed right from the start of CPK rule, notoriously marked by the coercive, violent and murderous evacuation, to use the CPK term, of the population of Phnom Penh and other towns and areas. 
previously governed by Marshal Lon Nol's Khmer Republic. The CPK leadership intended this mass deportation to abolish the urban-based feudalist bourgeois and petty bourgeois intellectual strata as classes by sending them to live under the political control of the toiling peasantry in the countryside and make them forever a part of a worker peasant class in formation which was henceforth to comprise 99% of the country's population. Footnote 16 references a notebook of the first rank S, it says S2, I don't know if that's right, S2 interrogator Tong Song Kuen uh, alias yeah. Pong, in an entry Ong dated the 7th of December 1977, it says here from the archives of the Documentation Centre of Cambodia, hereafter DC Cam Collection, author's translation. Can you confirm that that was your source for this statement in your book? Yes. That, and, uh, it should, and it should be S21. Now that document, if anyone wants to follow, is D313-1.2. Just a little bit of information, this notebook of uh, a little bit more detail, not too much. Can you just describe, please? Well, this was at a time before DC Cam had cataloged its materials. So this was a, a notebook in the handwriting of Bon, which was among the many documents that were then in DC Cam's uncatalogued possession. Thank you. Mr. President, I said one thing. I hope that's been covered. Can I please just make uh, this observation? The, the application made this morning uh, used up one hour of the prosecution's time. Can I please ask if that's borne in mind? Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Header. ສໍານາສົມນີ້ຄືມີມູນຫາຍຖ້ອມຕອບໃຫ້ອົງຈໍາເລັດ <laughs> ลูกอันธนาสมบดอลจูนទៅសាក្សីនៅឯកសារប្រមាណក្រុនោះនេះតើគួរចាត់ចែងយ៉ាងដូចមិនដេចនេះពេលនេះឯកសារឯកសារដ
นึ่งสัตว์ที่น่าจุนเฉียบแล้วลูกสติวเฮดเดอร์การสลับตะเคียนกรรมบรรลุเนี่ยเป็นตอนจอมเดลไลตี้อังยิมได้หนึ่งมันโตทัวร์สามนาคาสลับตะเคียนกรรมบรรลุเนี่ยไงใส่เตี้ยโดยเฉพาะอังยิมได้แล้วก็เฉยลูกมันโตสลับตะเคียนกรรมเนี่ยไงใส่เตี้ยได้หนึ่งจับดาวปีมองประมุดประตือมันเตยรัฐบาลตระกันรวมรวมจมูกหนึ่งอังมันเตยในอังกับพิบกองเปียสะใส่หนึ่งเนี่ยยิมได้ขนมกาจุนแล้วลูกสติวเฮดเดอร์ตลอดตะกันตีกันไล่เด็กก็ถนัดเนื้อวิ้งให้หนึ่งเอาเฉยก็ตลอดมุกันกันไล่พวกเราตะเคียนกรรมเนี่ยขนมกุตุสามนาคาในวิ้งเนื้อเปลือกไงใส่เนื้อบุหรให้ประกอบเอาไอ้อนุเรียมที่คงแข็งนองพลุนจุนจับจับตั้งปีรูปคือลูกนุ่นเชียนหนึ่งลูกเคียวสมพรตลอดการมันที่คงแข็งในอบตะกอบเป็นเจ้าหนึ่งประกอบไอ้นองพลุนก็ตลอดมาจะรวมสามนาคาอันนี้เป็นอย่างในไทยสายบันมุนมองประมุนปรึกได้ไล่ลูกนุ่นเชียประกอบไอ้นองพลุนมาในตะมันตุบคุมพลุนขังกร้อมได้รีบจอมในอบกอสอตู้สำหรับก็อาจจะรวมหนึ่งตามร้านกันจำนาคาสามนาคาปีจำง่ายสำหรับเจ้าสมเจริญกราวเชอ